Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geeky Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. I've got a fun Cinema 4D tutorial today. Um, when I first got into 3D, um, I didn't know anything about it, and I was kind of learning slowly as I went along. And I learned that there are numerous resources on the Internet where you can find textures for uh, models that you create. And oftentimes I would run across some great looking images that people took and they expected you to apply these to a model. And I thought, well, how do you use a texture like this to apply to a model? I mean, don't, if you're going to create a cooler, uh, a water cooler like this, don't you have to model all that? So initially I thought the people who were taking these pictures and thinking that you could apply them to a model was crazy or I just didn't know how to use these sorts of textures well I've now learned that the person who was taking them knew exactly what they were doing and it was I who needed to learn what to do with them well I learned how to do something with these a long time ago and so today's tutorial is about modeling a water cooler and using textures like this to apply to them. Now, you may not have a need to water to model a water cooler, which is cool, but if you want to maybe pick up some uh, tips on how to lay out your UV maps and use images like this in Photoshop, then you might find this tutorial uh, useful to you. Well, here's the model that I made in Cinema 4D and uh, I textured it in, uh, well, Cinema 4D and Photoshop. I like using Photoshop for mo uh, texturing things like this because it, uh, well, it works a little bit better and it's a little quicker and more responsive moving photographic images around than what I have experienced here in Cinema 4D. So I'm going to do the texturing in Photoshop but you will need to do a little UV work here in body paint. So this is the model. It looks, uh, well, very realistic in my, uh, in my opinion. Do a quick little render of it. It looks like a, uh, a real water cooler. Well, that's true because it's got photo quality uh, textures to it. Well, let's close this out. And with a new file, I'm just going to create a cube, and I'm going to make it editable. Now, if you're going to do something like this, where you need to have the object the uh, to scale, then what you want to want to do is not model it like I am today, because today I'm just going to eyeball it. But for the sake of this demonstration, and I think the end results will prove that it will look it will look just fine by eyeballing it. But if you need to be precise, then what you want to do is you want to create the object that you are modeling in the same dimensions as your texture map. So this texture map is 1757 by 2102. That's the size I'm going to want to create my cube, at least for this side. If I come over to my other image, I'm going to want to create it uh, according to the dimensions on this image. Now, these original images did need some cleaning up. Here were the originals. And when I took them, uh, I guess I was standing a little bit too close because you can see there's a little bit of f stretching here, a little fisheye uh, on this texture and the other one, you, you really see it a lot. But I was able to clean that up real uh, easily in Photoshop using the lens correction filter uh, under filters and under the distort uh, flyout menu. There you'll find lens correction. Okay, so I'm just going to eyeball this. Let's stretch that out, we'll say to there, and let's make it tall. I'd say that's tall enough. Okay, it's probably going to need to come out a little bit more there. Okay, there we go. Let's spin around to the back. Live selection tool, select polygon, select that face, right click. I'm going to extrude inner, and I'm just going to scale this down, hit my space bar to come back to my uh, move tool. 
or actually live selection, and right click and extrude this out. And there we go. We are done. I'm going to delete that face. I don't need that polygon. Now, when I created my original that I showed a few minutes earlier, I had added a little bit of a bevel to this. I'm not going to for this tutorial. It'll just be a little quicker. But if you want to knock off those hard edges when you're rendering it, you may want to add just a little bit of a bevel to your uh, corners here. OK, I'm going to come to a UV layout view here. And I, because I created this from a primitive, I already have a UV tag, so I'm just going to drag my tag up here. There we go. Select all. And I'm going to use my uh, optimal uh, mapping angle here, or my optimal angle here. That will give me the results that I want. Under the Transform tab here, I want to type in 90. And now I'm just going to use my Polygon Selection Tool. And I'm just going to lay these out so that they uh, can take a texture. Let me see. This is the front. Now this thing, this part here, the back, it'll never be seen. This piece here, they will never be seen. And these will never be seen uh, because they're going to be against the wall and pretty much completely hidden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them the same texture as the top and the bottom. Now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to click on my live selection, come over here to attribute, snapping, and I want to enable point snapping. What that will allow me to do is allow me to snap the points together on the, fa on the polygons that are going to receive the same texture. Okay, so I will rotate that 90 degrees. I'll just pop it up there. Top and the bottom, they're going to get their own texture. And I'm going to give these here that will never be seen the same texture as the top and the bottom. And that's the front face. Okay, I will pop that up there. Snap these right together. Take this, these two, snap them together. Select everything there. And I'm just going to hold down the number 5 key and stretch these out a little bit or scale them out. I'm not stretching them. I'm scaling them because I want these to be to scale. Now I'm just going to move them away, uh, separate them a little bit so that the textures don't bleed uh, from one surface to the next. OK, I like that. Let's create a texture here, new material. Right click on this sphere here, texture channels. I'm going to give it a color channel. And I'm going to make this texture 2000 by 2000 by 300. Drag the texture onto my cube. Drop it right there into place. I'm going to grab my pin here. And I want to come over to Attributes. And I want to make it hard. I want 100% hardness. Pop on over to the Color tab. Make it 100% black. And I can probably lower my pin size some. There we go. OK. What I need to do now is I want to outline all these polygons with my black pin so that I can save this and bring it into Photoshop and apply my textures. So first thing I need to do is make sure I have Live Selection and Polygon Selection enabled. And I have to click Select All. Now I am telling Body Paint to, uh, that with the selected polygons, I want to outline it with my brush tool. So I'm going to come over here to Layer and Outline Polygons. So now if I hide my polygons, well, if I move them away, you'll see. There I have my outlines. So I'm going to come to File, Save Texture As. I'm just going to save it as a, well, I'll save it as a, uh, PSD. And we will call it test. Save that. Okay, I'm going to open up this PSD in Photoshop and I'll be right back. Alright, here's our file in Photoshop and I could use bridge to bring in these textures. I'm not. I'm just going to drag and drop them in from the folder that they are contained in. 
Okay, let's start with this one. I'm going to drag it right up over onto my PSD file. And I think I will lower the opacity a little bit so I can see where it goes over here. And I will just line the corner up here to my UV map. And see, this is the thing that is probably not advisable if you have to be absolutely pre precise, because I'm just kind of eyeballing it, I, uh, and I'm scaling it probably um, to a degree that it wasn't supposed to be scaled. It may be a little bit too wide, a little bit too thick, too high, um, but I'm not going for precision. I'm just here to have some fun on this one. Okay, I think I will scale it just a little bit larger than it needs to be just to make sure it um, overlaps my black UV um, lines. Okay, so that's that one. We are done with that texture. Let's bring in the separate second one and I will bring it right in here. And I let's increase the opacity of that first one. And for this one, I'm going to lower it. And I'm just going to position it here uh, over my UVs. There we are. And grab this top corner up here and just bring it right into place. These uh, smart guides are getting in the way here may want to disable them. Okay, let's see how that looks. That looks good. Okay. Um, bring the opacity back up to 100% and double duplicate that layer. Now, uh, I'm just duplicating it because I am going to, for these other pieces, I am going to use the middle of this texture inside this box here to apply this part of the texture to these UVs. So, I like that. Let's get rid of the excess. And I'm just using the selection tool, making a selection and hitting um, delete. Control D to deselect that. Let's bring the opacity back up. And let me check the opacity of all the layers. Okay, let's save this. Save as. And we'll just call this. Oh, well, we'll just save it. Let's come back over here into Cinema 4D. And let's load. Come back to our color channel. Reload the image, yes. And let me come, let me move this over. All right, let's see what it is that we've got. Let's see how this looks. Okay, that's the, uh, the side that is against the wall. Let's render that. That looks pretty good. I think my textures are upside down, but we'll fix that. And let's control R to render that. Oh, that's looking good. And actually, this one is right side up. Okay, so let's select that. Let me uh, reduce the size of my live selection tool. Select that face right here. I'm over here, UV mapping, UV command, and I'm going to choose mirror V. And then what that does is it flips it upside down. Now let's control R to give it a render. Okay, very quickly, um, we've got a good looking um, outdoor external uh, water cooler. I think if uh, you spend a little bit more time, you can do a little adjusting of the UV maps here. Uh, where they meet with the texture. For example, on this side, I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to hold down the number 6 key, and this will allow me to very slightly just 
rotate the uh, UV map and now it looks a little bit better on top I, but I have probably come off uh, over here yes I have so hold down 5 and I'll just scale inwards just a little bit except now I've thrown it off down there so I may have to play around with uh, selecting points and dragging them around because I guess my textures weren't entirely uh, perfect but be that as it may this is a very easy way to create a good-looking model with zero uh, modeling time spent in creating it. I mean, how long did we spend creating this? Uh, all of maybe 30 seconds. But when you render it out, it looks darn good. Okay, so this is how to apply these sorts of textures to your models and you do a little quick search over at renderosity or at cg.com or share share cg.com you find images like this textures like this for doors for windows for all, all sorts of things and you can now create much better looking models with these by using these realistic textures now Bear in mind, you get up too close and you realize, gee, that's just a texture, a photograph projected onto a uh, flat modeled surface. And that's true. So maybe these wouldn't be uh, perfect for viewing right up close. But at any medium distance or long distance, uh, you'd never know that it wasn't a really intricately modeled um, object. So I hope this tutorial has been uh, of some use for you. Thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.